Be seated. Our sermon this morning is taken from Acts chapter 18. And we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 4, the first few verses of chapter 18. And so I was preparing to preach on this particular subject. I was reminded, uh, one of the things that I have tried or striven to do throughout my life, um, my Christian life that is, since the day I was born again in 1993, is to read Christian biographies. Not just biographies of, of um, great preachers, uh, biographies of Christians. I think one of the first Christian biographies I read was uh, Corey Ten Boom's story, The Hiding Place. But I have read the, the stories of the lives of many great preachers, many great evangelists. And one of the things that has struck me of late, and not so much when I was originally reading them, because often the, the biographer unintentionally sometimes will dwell upon only the man himself. He will set before us the great preacher, with, uh, and a good biographer, of course, will set him before us warts and all. He'll show us his failings and his strengths. What often happens, though, is that the people who made it possible for him to conduct that ministry fade into the background. But whenever you read the story of a Wesley, a Whitfield, an Edwards, or a Martin Lloyd-Jones, or any of the great preachers, Spurgeon, for instance, in the background are thousands of thousands of people who helped him in the midst of that ministry. Billy Graham, with his revivals, could not have done them without the Billy Graham Evangelistic Organization behind, his, uh, behind him all the way. Uh, but it's often the case that, as I said, a biographer allows them to slip into the darkness. Well, Luke doesn't do that. When it comes to the ministry of Paul, he brings the helpers, not himself. He's a very humble man. You, you only know he's in the background often by his use of pronouns. We, for instance, uh, indicating that he was with them when they traveled to another place. Uh, 